What do you do? What do you do in the bath? What is the purpose of the news? Is it to be entertainment? Is it to confirm our biases? Is it to whip us into a frenzy so we get those nice hormone releases from being righteously angry? Is it to make money? I would say probably not. But these are the goals of the modern news media, and they're a big part, not the whole, of what lies behind the problems that they're having, which have, this week, led to the whole Covington controversy and to mass layoffs. The goal of the news media should be to inform us without giving us a particular slant. It should be an attempt to objectively represent reality, much in the same way science does in a, in a lot of ways, seeking to be objective, providing both sides where there is a controversy and something about which both sides can be said to exist. The problem is there's a whole bunch of vulnerabilities in news media, in the technological landscape, in the political landscape, in the social landscape, that have changed how it all works and have undermined that presumed mission of the news. Time was, it was only really Fox News, cable news and talk radio that this could be said about. These were the outliers, the exceptions, the, the propagandists, the echo chambers of a particularly singular point of view. Now it's everyone, and for all that they in the past used to complain about a liberal media bias, that tended to be because reality has a left-wing bias, or at least it used to until the left went off the rails. But now everybody is Fox News, that's the model that makes money, even though lots of people who watch it are old. That's not true of other outlets such as the internet, which skew a bit younger, though less so as time goes on and more and more generations have grown up used to the internet. Still, that Fox News effect, that Daily Mail effect, you know, tabloids go way back presenting simplistic news in simple language for people and propagandizing to them. In the UK we've been grappling with this for a very long time, but that tabloid news, that attention-grabbing headline clickbaity kind of stuff that's now near enough universal uh, across the media. Technology means now that we're all news outlets, but we're all news outlets without necessarily having the nous or the thought or the time to check sources, to check the validity of a story before we pass it on, and this is how genuine fake news propagates. Something hits us in a certain way, twitches, twitches a certain trigger in our brains and we unthinkingly retweet it, reshare it, whatever to everybody else without bothering to vet it. So we don't have time, we don't even think to do so and we place trust still, despite all these problems in news media, to have done these steps for us, to have vetted the stories that they present to us that we then pass on. There's a whole bunch of dishonest actors, unfortunately, at work. There's also a problem in the devaluation of news in that they are not fact-checking or waiting for things to you know, come, come to a head or for all the facts to come out before they respond because it's all about immediacy. That immediacy is so desirable because of technology, because people are reporting on the ground, citizen journalists or just someone who happens to have a smartphone in their pocket. So speed is of the essence if they want to make money off it, and making money is another issue that distorts news. If you've got to keep your sponsors, if you're going to keep your audience, you have to stick to a particular point of view, a particular ethos that appeals to them. That's not always a good thing. If you are going to report the facts, but you know that your audience will respond hostilely and might stop watching, might stop clicking, might stop subscribing, 
there's a pressure on you to hush it up, not report on it, rather than to inform your, your audience. There's this breakdown of trust that comes there. When it came to broadcast media, this was an issue from time to time, but by and large, because things were so centralised, you either advertised with and sponsored these few news companies, or you didn't sponsor anyone at all, you didn't get that exposure at all, and there were always plenty of other people that wanted that slot that you had. Now, however, power is very much in the hands of the sponsors. I mean, just consider the apocalypse here. Technology's made everyone a journalist, so no one's a journalist. That's one part of the problem, the, the speed, the demands of speed, the monetary demands are another one. To make money, you've got to get clicks. What gets clicks? Outrage, or playing to your audience, not challenging them, not giving them views or facts that contradict their pre-existing point of view. This is toxic to the very idea of journalism. There's also issues around activists in journalism. There's all these low-paying blogger jobs and there's always plenty of people that like to think of themselves as being a reporter or a journalist that still, for some reason, has a degree of, of cultural cachet, a certain amount of respectability and that's largely going out the window more and more as time progresses. But another reason that people get into the media is not to report the news, the facts, but to use those outlets and the traction that they can have on the public consciousness to enact their own activism. Everything is now opinion. It, it feels like there's very little reporting of the facts, there's very little investigation, confirmation, understanding and presentation. And even those who do go into it with a slant, a deliberate and willful slant that they have apparently been taught is okay, there's no real attempt to remain objective. And there's a hunger for that objectivity, for that fairness, which can also be exploited. Talking heads on YouTube, yeah, like like me, uh, like people like Tim Pool, that has been sad to see him become so embittered with the whole thing more and more as time's gone on. Yeah, we have this authenticity, this this blokey kind of down home talking direct to the audience. You kind of come to see how the sausage is made and, and, and so on, that, that whole thing. We have that authenticity. We don't have necessarily that breadth of knowledge. If I'm talking about something outside the realm of political science, history, gaming, geek media, stuff like that, yeah, it's just my opinion and I'm largely pulling it out of my ass. And this goes for a lot of other people who are often extremely clueless on what they're talking about. Um, take the Ralph retorts, for example. But there's that hunger for authenticity, for honesty, and so on, which unfortunately can be exploited by bad actors. I mean, my go-to example for this and the, and the damage it can cause is what happened during Gamergate. The mainstream media would not touch it, would not even make an attempt to understand it for the, for the most part. And that enabled dishonest actors like Milo Yiannopoulos to get a huge amount of, of cachet and credibility simply by reporting what was actually going on, at least initially, before his slant really started to take over. This is another weakness in the way that we have things set up at the moment. There's this exploitable loophole to be gained by treating someone fairly and then trying to drag them with you to some partisan point of view. Everyone's partisan, but that desire, that need for authenticity, for honesty, for accuracy has created a vulnerability for genuinely bad actors to operate in. I don't think this is something that is irrecoverable from but the idea of mass media may be dead as it as it fractures into so many different fragments and groups and so on. That's something we need to tackle. But I think the kind of immediate news, the, the headline news, should be limited to here is what we think has happened, here are the latest details. An analysis and opinion should probably wait 
for 24 to 48 hours to give their time for research and in-depth analysis, meaningful analysis. You know, leave the immediate stuff to the citizen reporters, the people on the ground, and just reporting what happened. And leave the rest for a more longer-term, less frenzied, less, less heated discussion. I mean, look at what happened with Covington. Everyone jumped on it far too fast, reported things that turned out not to be true. And while there's little doubt in my mind that a bunch of Catholic school anti-abortion kids are not going to be the nicest kids in the world, probably going to be rather ignorant and horrible, because everyone leapt on it so quickly, treated them poorly, treated them unfairly, lied about them, either by omission or deliberately, that's been a massive own goal and has further degenerated trust in the media as a whole, not just the more left-wing outlets, if you can call American left left-wing at all, which I personally wouldn't. So the technology issue I think can be dealt with culturally by making a separation between that kind of immediate reporting of what's going on and then the more longer term analysis. At the moment everything is squeezed and crammed in and everyone tries to make the most money possible in the least amount of time possible by very shallow analysis and immediate knee-jerk opinions. That doesn't help anybody. The activist portion is harder to deal with, but I think it can be done by creating and implementing a, a code of ethics. Um, I mean, various journalistic organizations already have these laid out, it's just that nobody is fucking adhering to them. So that's something that can be dealt with within the industry and it just needs to be broadened to include bloggers and so on have some kind of recognized symbol or vetting procedure or punishments something to keep people in line and reporting the news properly finance is a much trickier issue uh, advertising continues to become more and more worthless and a large part of this is what drives clickbait and so on that's our fault as an audience and it's also not something that's going to be easy to change through cultural engineering or or whatever else you know these are kind of hardwired instincts reward mechanisms in our brains you know it's the same kind of mechanisms that drive addiction so it's unlikely that we're going to find a way that we can prevent that the intercession needs to happen somewhere else and funding is tricky if you want to make money you have to do this pandering tabloid shallow bias confirming nonsense if you take a more measured weighed ponderous informative approach to things you're not going to get the same number of clicks and so on it's not going to be as profitable one way around that is state media, but state media is often simply a, a voice and organ for the government to transfer data through. What we need is public funding without making the organisation that results completely beholden to the government. This is what the BBC used to be, but has been eroded over the years. So this may be an approach. Otherwise, we can, as individuals, attempt to prioritise independent journalists and support them directly, as with people like, like Tim Pool. But you, know, you need more people like him. And unfortunately, the independent journalist space is just as filled, if not more filled, <laughs> with people who have rather lunatic fringe beliefs, because that's what gets them and keeps them an audience. And you can see the corrosive effect that just having your ego strokes, let alone, let alone the money aspect, has had on people like Sargon, like Tim to a lesser extent, but it certainly has. Even I have been pushed to somewhat towards the centre, probably just because of the people that I interact with day to day. I've been cut off from certain areas, well, what I call echo prisons. 
they are, that's another aspect of all this. I mean, none of these are things that can't be tackled, but is the will there, is the capacity there to do it? If I can toot my own horn for a second, because I hardly ever <laughs> do that, I often get people leaving comments like, oh, you're criminally undersubbed, or this is a really nuanced and in informative video on, on this topic. Uh, strange that it doesn't have more views, or that it wasn't served to me by the, by the algorithm and so on. Yeah, that is another aspect to this. Algorithms tend to present you what you already agree with rather than things that you don't agree with. Yeah, that's that's another issue. But, I mean, while I do make the effort to make content of that sort, it's more often when I react fairly immediately to something that has happened or I lose my composure, those are the things that get the big hits and I have to constantly struggle and remind myself not to indulge that, not to chase after it. But the fact is that's apparently why my channel is not that popular. Because I take that more nuanced, thoughtful, longer term approach in examining the topics of the day. And that just doesn't sell clicks. So while none of these problems are, are insurmountable, are insoluble, I think the root cause of the problem is us, what we click on, what we watch, what we subscribe to, and how that shapes the algorithms that serve this information up to us. So at the end of all of this, it's really down to us as an audience if we want to make a change. And most people don't. Zang. Like a dog on a what? Fight the power for myself on the throne. My wishes is getting heavy like it weighs a ton. I will run you down like a marathon. Take you up good, put you in the trunk. See you next Tuesday, you with the punk.